Hi everyone, welcome once again to Root Access. I'm Ryan Ritchie. And I'm Adam Ford. Yes, you are. <laughs> what up, peeps? <laughs> this is TDL Live. It is April 14th. Take a break from the taxes, my friend. <laughs> it's time that you got caught up on your Apple News. Tonight we're going to talk about, uh, we've got an exciting announcement about something coming to the channel next week following this very broadcast. Cool. And uh, we're also going to um, talk about a new way for you to watch your favorite TDL programs. Cool. But first, let's get to the news. Let's get to it. Up first in the news, John Mayer. You might know him for such hits as... He's a big fan uh, of Apple. He's so big of a fan that after being on stage with Steve, he went on a tour sponsored by BlackBerry. But that, um, beside the point. Anyhow, John Mayer apparently was having a problem with his uh, computer. As, as reported by Gizmodo, he was having a problem with his computer. What's his computer? A Mac. Okay. And so he sent in a, an incident report. We've done this before. Send to Apple, sure. As sure. a matter of fact, I've been getting kind of smarmy with them. Yes. Because I've been frustrated by the number of times that this happens in Leopard. So like Mail I'll Mail especially. I'll go well, I had a lot of problems Oof. with Safari before the latest update. So I would go in and I would say, Oh, you know, it says describe what you were doing mm -hmm. and I'd be like, Oh, trying to open a web page, my bad. <laughs> you know, I'd send that in. And you don't think anybody ever looks at them or anything. Well, John Mayer posted on his blog that uh, he put in his report. Mm -hmm that it was John Mayer. He said, hey, John Mayer here, I'm having this problem. And then he got a personalized reply. Oh, is that right? That, that, that is right. That's <laughs> similar true. to the one that you got, I'm sure. No, I did not get any interesting <laughs> enough. However, in a follow-up story on Gizmodo, they discovered that if anybody does this, it seems to get a personal reply. <laughs> if you put in there, hey, John Mayer here, <laughs> you get a personal reply. John Mayer here trying to check my email. So, I mean, you know, that's, that's going to be, it's probably going to be worn out by the time you yeah. try it at home, but might I suggest other Apple luminaries? Um, What's John going to do after all his... Seal. Seal. Or Mac Girl suggests Trent Reznor. But or, I'm concerned about John Mayer. He's not going to be able to get the personal well, attention Well, he soon. too will have to use someone else's name. Mm. Uh, Kanye West <laughs> would work. Sure, um, sure. I don't know if Jeff Goldblum still works or not. Gary Busey. No, I mean, Maybe. I literally don't know if Jeff Goldblum works. <laughs> Thank you. That's a zinger. If you've got a zinger, send it to us. We're available live via iChat or AOL Instant Messenger. The name is TDL Live. Uh, if you want to do what I'm calling e-snail mail, <laughs> Let's email, but email is so slow in this day and age. Especially you know? if it unexpectedly quits all the time. Oh, jeez. John Mayer here. So you can send an email <laughs> as well. It's feedback at the digital lifestyle dot TV. All right, good. That's all out of the way. Uh, you, you got something for us about Polaroid? Polaroid? Yes. Adam <laughs> Ford's been on vacation this week. <laughs> he missed the pre-production uh, uh, meeting yesterday. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll Tell me about it. Why don't I sail the ship? Tell me about it. And you just, you just fix the sails. I'm going to. Okay, I'm going to. I'll enough. steer us. You steer us. So, Polaroid. Oh, my goodness. Like a month ago, Polaroid says, you know what? We're done. Right. No. I, did re I do remember that. Okay. I do remember that. No more, no more instant cameras. Right. End of the line. Tears were shed. But, thanks to a company called Polaroid, oh. you can now get the same... Uh, a feeling you used to get from those old Polaroid cameras thanks to their new digital cameras that also have built-in instant printers. The printers in the camera? Yes. No! Mac Girl's saying no, but it no? could be. It could be. It goes along with the computer. Okay, good. We're going to play charades, folks. <laughs> Here we go. Yes. Go ahead. Perhaps Sounds it's a like, stand Hold on, hold on. Help me. Help me. Teeth. Teeth. Me, teeth me, Bluetooth, Bluetooth, Bluetooth. That's good. That's pretty good. It works via Bluetooth. So it's a standalone printer. Yes. A small standalone printer. Yes. That operates via Bluetooth. Yes. Which is cool because I've never seen that in a digital. I don't think I've ever seen Bluetooth in a digital camera. And it'll cost about $150. Is that all? That well, doesn't seem too bad. It's a lot more than a Polaroid. So it probably prints like a little, like, I don't know, one of these. Three by five. Something, yeah. Two by four. Something like that. It's written down on the notes, I'm told. 
37. Credit card size. Credit card Credit size. size. Woo! Nice. All right. Boy, if only the folks at home could participate. <laughs> Credit card sized yes. prints, full color, mm -hmm. dry to the touch, connects wirelessly by Bluetooth to phones and by cable to cameras. So the Bluetooth won't be in the cameras and that's why I've never seen it before. Well, or you could use it with cameras that don't yet have Bluetooth, I'm assuming. Right, with the cable. Sure, sure. Why not? But that's cool that the phone will work. Well, I'd hope the phone, phone? Phone, phone, phone. Phone, phone would work. Hey, you know, <laughs> <laughs> on our blog today, I, uh, I, and if you think this is good, you should read it. Um, there was a posting on the blog today regarding the the rumored tablet device and this whole idea that there's this tablet device. And I kind of right, made we've talked about that. I kind of made the case that there's really no need for the tablet device if you want a tablet, get an iPhone, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. However, I said at the end, but there is this big glaring gaping hole uh, in the in the tower lineup where you could have something between the Mac Mini and the Mac Pro. You disagree, apparently. Between the Mac Mini and the Mac Pro? A, a low-end tower. It's the iMac. I don't want a monitor. Okay. Well, anyhow, so Apple might not <laughs> I don't be- understand. <laughs> Apple might not be ready to fill that gap, but a third-party company is. Uh, their name is Star. Wait, third-party? Yes, they are going to make you, Attention, it's called folks. Open Mac. And it's a clone. A what? Yeah. Well. Throwback. Thro <laughs> Holla? <laughs> right. it's, a, it's a clone in the sense that they are basically creating uh, PCs from off-the-counter, off-the-shelf parts in the PC. And then hmm. um, you can buy it with Mac OS X pre-installed. Or you can install it yourself. I Probably this will be next week's lawsuit of the week, if I had to guess. <laughs> it's um, shaping out to be. <laughs> so look forward to that. And as we went to air tonight, uh, actually their website was down. So the Open Mac clone <laughs> costs uh, $400. That gets you a 2.2 gigahertz Core 2 D Duo, uh, 2 gigs of RAM, integrated graphics, 250 gig hard drive, 20 times uh, DVD burner. So obviously uh, a uh, substantially more powerful machine than the Mac Mini, for a lower price for the point, money, yeah. and um, it's like I said, four hundred or for five fifty-five, it will come with Leopard pre-installed. That's three fives. So hurry if you want to get one before the uh, before Apple comes knocking and, and shuts that down. Now, now let's think about that for a minute, though. Yeah. I could see them making the case for the pre-installed system. Right when you're buying it from them and it already has Leopard on it, because if you look in the software agreements, that you're buying a license to use that on a Mac, on an Apple computer. So, but if you're just buying a tower from these people and they just happen to be able to put Leopard on it and you put it on yourself, I'm not so sure Apple can stop that. I think it's the way that it's marketed and I think Apple can stop it. Um, it's they're marketing themselves as an as an Apple computer. That's an alternative uh, clone, basically. I mean, that's how they're that's how they're they're putting this out there. Is we have this computer, and oh by the way, we can install Leopard on it. Um, I think that that that's enough to be masquerading as a Apple hardware, and and I think that if if Apple's gonna sue over the squiggly. The squiggly logo thing. They didn't sue. They were well, protecting okay. their it's, trademark. Yeah, that's were, fine. And I'm all for it. And okay. I'm all for protecting your trademark. Okay. This is like to the next level. This okay. is like this is like bigger than the squiggly with the with the little stem and leaf, no bite taken out of it or anything. We can't even show it to you. And we can't even do that. But um, that's how top secret it is. But <laughs> Yes. <laughs> do you think do you think they're gonna go after them? Oh well, heck yeah. Well here's my here's my thing. Here's a better idea. Why don't you make the machine that people want? And then they don't have to get all excited when somebody else offers the machine. If these people can put this machine together. But who doesn't want it? For $400. But who doesn't want what their, what their current lineup is? Well, I apparently mean, somebody does. The, the website's down. It's, it's flooded. I think there's well, a place. That's because people are checking it out. They're but, like, is this really true? I'm not, I really have to have well, one. Well, let of these me things. let me give you an, let me give you a real life example. Okay. Uh, our very own Mac girl attends class at a, at a leading uh, university. Okay. Uh, in this university, they have a lab of Mac Pros, right? 
Mac Pro, very hefty machine. Yes, indeed. Now, the Mac Pro is so hefty, and by the way, I think it's mainly theatrics to, <laughs> to back the price. It's like, oh, this is so heavy, no wonder it was so expensive. <laughs> but um, because they're so expensive, they don't put the machines on the floor because people will kick them, dirt will get in, so they put them up on the table. Mm -hmm. So you got these giant towers on the table next to the monitors. You can't see each other. The fan's right in your ear. You don't know what's going on. Why can I not have a low cost but not Mac Mini level see, tower? You I disagree looking, with me You're on looking this. at it the wrong way. You're you looking, don't think there should be a I tower that, between $600 I, and $2,700? I, I think you're looking at it. Someone out there, TDL Live, help you're, me out here. You're looking at it the wrong way. The problem in that case is not the tower, it's the desk. The desk is ill-equipped to handle. That's so Jobsian. It's <laughs> the, the desk, desk. It is the desk. It's the desk's fault. The desk can't accommodate it. Okay. Clearly. Right. There's no other alternative. Okay. So if I see a car I like, and, and I'm like, boy, I wish that was available in a station wagon, you would say, just buy my minivan. Just buy the minivan. You want four, four seats? Buy the minivan. It's not what I want. This is what I want. Who wants the wagon, though? I, I mean, I'm not on. saying I want a wagon. You, sir. Those Everybody are, out there want a wagon. Those are incendiary I mean, there's remarks. Pretty, there's some pretty cool wagons out there, I will admit. But anyhow, uh, <laughs> thank you. Someone, so here we go. Some folks in the chat agreeing with me. <laughs> and uh, Vince brings up a, a, a valid point here. Why doesn't Apple sue the Modbook then? <laughs> well, basically, the Modbook folks, they are... I don't know why Apple lets them do it, but they are Apple proprietary solutions uh, vendors. So basically, right. they've uh, paid to play, and I think they will be able to make the mod book right up until the day that Apple releases their own version. Right. And then they'll probably become part of Apple, and everybody will be happy. But we got to go back to this. Because uh, uh, Garrett, what, cut, his, cut his mic. Cut his station mic if he doesn't want to participate. $600. Yes. $2,700. Okay. You don't see a problem with this. Get an iMac. I don't. I get an iMac. What's, uh, what's the big deal? Get an iMac. Everybody needs a monitor anyway. It's a nice monitor. What if you have a monitor? What if you have a lab where you have monitors? You're stuck. You have to get the tower. No dual monitor. Just plug it in. Done. All right. Let's move on. It's a big desktop. Let's move on. If you, miss, uh, if you miss our show tonight, which obviously you're not missing it because you can see it, but if you're thinking, I think I missed a show. Right. Whew, that was complicated. <laughs> uh, you'll notice there's something new in the player if you're watching us on the digitallifestyle.tv homepage right now. Below us, uh, probably right about there. I hate that when there's like flash things and the people well, try to point, point. If we both point. It's down there somewhere. There, but I hate there. that because nobody believes it. There. That we know where it is. It's right there. Okay. You'll see a button that says on demand. Press it. If you press that button, uh, you're going to see a list of different shows from us here at the Digital Lifestyle that you can now watch on demand. We love the network and we love it when you sit and watch and enjoy and find new programming. But if there's something you absolutely want to watch, now you can watch it on demand. We yeah. just got it started, so you're not going to find everything in there yet. But uh, check it out, let us know what you think. It's pretty cool. I'll tell you what's not cool. Tell me about it. MacBook display issues. You, sir, are a MacBook owner. I am. Have any thoughts on I this? I know a few, a few MacBook owners. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know that there was a display issue. I'm having no display issues of any kind. Mm -hmm. Although I'm not. Everyone, I'm not else, everyone else probably has the wrong desk. I, they might have the wrong desk. They might have the wrong desk. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not of the most most uh, current generation of MacBook. Okay. So I understand that the issue is is more prevalent in the the, the newest version. So. Um, I'm not experiencing any problems, but supposedly there are some, uh, some serious graphical issues. Yes, display issues, especially with uh, QuickTime files embedded in um, internet websites, web pages, as if there's any other kind of web page. <laughs> and uh, the, um, just the display of text sometimes is doubled. Yeah, and like flickers and everything. Yeah, yeah. It's supposed to go all crazy. I haven't experienced anything. Um, and the, I guess the most interesting part of this whole thing is the uh, the Apple acknowledges it part that's that's been going around. Mm -hmm. um, and and as we know, as we talked about in, in the in the past here, Apple nothing is acknowledged by Apple until it's acknowledged by Apple. You know what I mean? It's you, not, you better explain that. Okay, so nothing is nothing is fact until it's on the website. Until there's some kind of way to go to, to an Apple website and read it, 
it's not fact. Um, it's not a. It's not known or anything else. So uh, the fact that that reports are citing that Apple acknowledges it. If you go to Apple's website, even if you go to the support section, you're not going to find it there. Not yet. You, it, well, it's coming. It's coming. According to Apple, not acknowledging it, it's coming. <laughs> but, but I know. It, I know what you not, mean. It's not acknowledged. So, right. so I mean, if you, if you're reading all these things out there now, and you're going into the Genius Bar to get it to get it looked at, there. I, I mean, clearly there's an issue, and it's going to be addressed. But it's not. It's not acknowledged. It's not like you're going to walk in and people are going to be like, "Oh, that's part of uh, you know X Y Z known issue, whatever." I don't know. But it's 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 not going to happen like that. So it's it's not it's not. I I, I take issue. It's not known. Some of the best actors work at the Genius Bar, and they can <clears throat> make you think that that you are the first person they've ever seen with the <laughs> issue. And then, oh my goodness, your, your uh, power no, supply is not working in a G5 iMac? <laughs> hey, Lou, come over here. You're not going to believe it. <laughs> when in reality, it's the, maybe the 10th one they've seen that week. Yeah. But um, I, I think you're going to see acknowledgement on this shortly. You obviously disagree. I, I don't This could know. end in a fisticuff. I, I could. We're just, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we mentioned on demand, um, but we do have a big announcement to make regarding next week after our show. Cool, what have we got? Well, many of you will remember, those of you who uh, have been around Apple for a while, you'll remember the, the series of Switcher ads. Now, were you around in the Switcher days? Oh, uh, sure. Ellen Feist ring a bell at all? No. You don't remember Ellen Feist. No. no, of course not. Great. So, Ellen Feist <laughs> was one of the switchers. Okay? Maybe, folks, if you remember Ellen, TDLY. I'm go, I'll probably remember her when I see her. Well, you're not going to get to see her because the clip didn't properly import. But, oh, no. Um, <laughs> I'll show it to you later. Okay. Ellen Feist was in the switcher ads. She, um, there, there was controversy because she seemed a little... Uh, Relaxed. She seemed very, very calm. Her eyes were a little, little red. Mm. Uh, she, she, she says she had a cold. Um, the, the commercial was filmed a little after 419, but before 421. And um, the, the thought was, <laughs> this created a lot of controversy about, about Ellen Feist. She claims everything is on the up and up, and she just had a cold. Okay, fast forward X number of years, and uh, Ellen Feist is all grown up. <laughs> and she, uh, two summers ago, she was part of a film in France called Bed and Breakfast. Mm. It's um, a short film, and about 45 minutes, and uh, she plays a, an American college student. Oh, cool. And she actually does a really good job, I think. But guess what? Everybody will get to decide next week because we've been working overtime on this. Uh, right here, TDL, next week, following this show, that's Monday the 21st, at probably 9.30-ish, mm -hmm. we will have Bed and Breakfast starring Ellen Feist from the Apple Switcher ads right here on this very network. Awesome. So put it in the eye, cows. It's coming. As if you weren't going to watch us, now you have another reason to watch us and then keep watching. Yeah. Ellen Feist, Bed and Breakfast. Put it on the blogs. Dig it. <laughs> <laughs> the kids are digging these days. That's what I hear. Or Reddit. Or delicious it. Delicious it. Yeah. Is that what they say? I don't know. Okay. We could. All right. Who cares? Uh, there'll be a press release, and it'll be in the on the blog tomorrow, so you can point everybody to it. If they're like, "No way!" You mean that really cool thing you watch on t on the on the computer? They're gonna have that movie. They are. Wow. <laughs> Let's move on. Let's do it. UK Music Biz. The UK Music Biz wants a bit of the iPod cash. Who doesn't want to get on Surprising. this? Surprising. Who wow. doesn't want to get on this? Wow. Uh, so basically, it's the old yarn about since the iPod can be used to put music on it mm -hmm. that maybe you got from illicit sources, maybe you didn't, but why bother with whether, you know, yeah. there's, any, there's any actual illegalities. They would like to see uh, a new tax on said iPods oh my. Uh, for compensation for fair use copy. Oh, I don't know about all this. Everybody's got a handout for the iPod. I don't know about this. Come new on. taxes. Oh, geez. Are you no announcing new your taxes. Are you announcing your candidacy? No new, no new taxes. Yes, I'm going to run. So this, you know, this is there's these uh, issues have come up before Canada. There, there was a tax on MP3 players, um, and so now in the UK they're looking at it and saying, first of all, 
why now? Obviously, because now it's real popular. Back right. when the device debuted in 2001, you didn't care. Why their taxes are are high anyway? All the universal health care and everything is costly. So I I, I believe I, I mean I'm no expert on on the UK, but I believe their taxes are already pretty pretty lofty. So to add that in in addition to their you know gas prices. Watch out. Well, without, without the show going too economical here, we're no CNBC. <laughs> um, the point, the, the, the point I, I'm trying to make here is, so then are you saying it's okay? Like if I pay the tax, oh, now I can copy music illegally because you've said, well, we need, we need this tax, which it's a tax, but the money's going to the labels. I should clarify. It's not, it's not going to the government per se. It's, oh. going, it's going to the government agency that divvies out the royalties. Oh. So it's a royalty to the labels and presumably to the artists. But you see what I'm saying? Well, if wait. I'm paying you that, I would say, well, hey, well, now I can put whatever I want on this because I paid an extra $10 surcharge. But you're paying, you're paying on the music store. So when you pay on no, the music store. No, 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 when you buy the iPod. No, I understand. But yes. I'm just saying when you, right. pay on the, when you pay on the music store for right. the UK, yes. you're paying the record labels just like you'd be paying the record labels in any other country. I, I imagine it's set up the same way. Correct. So they're getting their, their cut of the music that's sold by them. I don't understand why they would expect a cut of the device when they have absolutely nothing to do with the device. They have to do with the content that you can buy for the device. Because what they're saying is people are using the devices for content they're not buying. And so this is their remedy. This would be so, the wait, you're not, so let me get this straight. You're not buying my stuff, but I'm going to tax you anyway? That's a pretty sweet deal. If they can pull that off, that is pretty sweet. I would love, I would love for somebody to buy uh, something other than my product and pay me for it. Hey, guess what time it is? <laughs> do you know what time it is? I think I do. It's time for the lawsuit of the week. I wish we had a bell or something that we could ring. Next week, we'll All get right. a bell. We okay. can get, can we get a bell? Yes. Or a buzzer? Or... A buzzer. No, we can't afford a buzzer, but we can get a bell. <laughs> lawsuit of the week. This is, uh, this is the old battery lawsuit. This is actually a settling of a lawsuit. Mm. Apple and Sony were uh, sued. Now, for those of you who don't know, Sony supplies or supplied uh, many of the batteries for Apple laptops for quite some time. Yep. And so in Japan, uh, essentially there was a couple that had sued them for uh, 2 million yen. Mm. Nah, what's that? Mm. And... Um, Basically, they ended up paying 1.3 million yen. Apple and Sony jointly agreed to pay 1.3 million yen. This was to a couple who had the MacBook. MacBook um, Pro, I believe. Let me double check my source on that. Wait for it. A MacBook. You know what else we could use? Hold music or preparation. <laughs> Either one of those would be great. The notebook computer. Okay, so their, their Apple notebook. It was a notebook. Uh, caught fire. Notebook, whichever one you prefer. Caught fire, and um, while the wife was using it at their home, uh, apparently that caused some burns yep. on the, on, to the husband. Yeah, he's now, trying to get the. I don't the know what they do in Japan. Okay, because I'm like, if no, she's no. using it and the guy's well, getting burns, the what idea. The heck? What, what happened was the, the uh, notebook was on the floor, and uh, it started to burn a hole into the, like, the. the I guess carpet or I don't know whatever the floor is. Whatever they put on the whatever floors over on, there. I don't know. <laughs> uh, apparently, that caught on fire and um, like fire was spreading everywhere, and he just grabbed the notebook and threw it out, which I think probably was not the best call. And basically, uh, the um, the woman was so traumatized that's that's legal speak that uh, they needed some money for that. Which, yeah. you know, you don't expect your, your, your you laptop don't. to catch on fire. No, no, you don't. You certainly don't. Although, really, if this would do it right now, that would be impressive television. But you wouldn't get to see it. We could just put the camera on here. But they day. wouldn't get to see it. Well, uh, why? Because we would lose it. We'd lose oh, because it. it goes into this yeah. computer. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Anyhow, Sony has recalled more than 9.6 million batteries uh, since... Uh, 2006 as a result of that's a lot of batteries, but it's important to know. Thanks, Adam Ford. It's important to know. That's the analysis you need. People at home are like, is that a lot of batteries? I don't know. It is, but comparatively, it really isn't because Dell uses these batteries. There's other computer makers that use the same batteries that have recalled many, 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 many more machines. So it's 
it's a lot, but comparatively, not so much. Well, and that's across, yeah, that's across all the all the people. So 9.6 right. million, and you figure Apple sells, what, a million a quarter, best guess? Yeah. Something like that? Something like that. Without <laughs> looking it up. Whatever. Uh, so <laughs> I guess the point here is, I, I guess the batteries now are better. Let's hope. Yeah. Or keep Resolve. a fire extinguisher nearby. Yeah. Put it in the sleep mode at night. Well, you can get a pretty penny for it if it does go up in flames. That's what we've learned. That's what we've learned. A pretty yen. A pretty, a pretty yen. You know, we have a little time here. It's uh, time for a new segment on the show. Oh, what's that? I like to call free time. <laughs> free time? Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what's, what's been on your mind? Oh, you know what? Actually, and by the way, if you haven't checked it out yet, be sure to head to the blog. Just go to digitallifestyle.tv. Yep. You can click on blog. It's in big web 2.0 size font. <laughs> um, I know you're going to be posting some yeah. information. You had some, some frustration with Wi-Fi on a I recent trip. I certainly did. So I just got back from a, uh, a recent trip. And um, I'll tell you what, traveling and the inconvenience of traveling and, and the, the hassles at the airport, you know, you finally get through all of the junk to get your stuff checked in and through the security and all that other stuff. And you sit down and you're like, oh, I'm just going to get on the Wi-Fi here and, you know, surf for a little bit. No, you're not. Not, if, not unless you want to pay for it. And it's, it's ridiculous. It's, uh, it's one service at this airport, another service at this airport. There's nothing, nothing standardized between them. You have, to pay for, you have to pay for all of it. None of it's free. It's, it's just a, a giant scam. And I'm going to have a blog post about it um, very shortly, probably tomorrow, the day after. Um, so check in on the blog, check it out. Um, some, I have some strong thoughts about it. And one of the frustrations I know we've both uh, mentioned, at least off camera, is this whole idea that you have an iPhone, yep. it's an AT&T device, most of these hotspots, well, a lot of these hotspots are AT&T hotspots, yep. and to date, you still can't get on those for free. Now, yes. AT&T says that that's coming, that like the Starbucks locations will be available free to everyone eventually, but uh, we're giving them our, we're giving them as much money as, uh, you know, it's an unlimited thing. Yeah. And this is most recently as of last uh, Thursday. So unless something has changed between last Thursday and now, um, using an AT&T hotspot on your iPhone, uh, it still brings you to the landing page where uh, you have to log in or uh, you have to pay to log in. So if you already have an account, you can log in and you're good. Uh, if you don't have an account, you have to set one up. Day passes are like 10 bucks, and then you can get scammed at the next airport that's not AT&T for another 10 bucks, so then that's 20 bucks, and then your hotel Wi-Fi might not be free, and then you gotta pay another 10 bucks. If you're lucky, that's all it is, and oh, whatever, it's just money. Maybe you should just write letters. Write letters, I've heard of that. I've heard of writing letters. Listen to the radio. Listen to me getting old on you. <laughs> Get your things in order. I might actually. I might do that. I might do it. Blog about it. Let you know how it went. <laughs> <laughs> now that we're in the blogosphere. That's right. Term I said I'd never use. <laughs> almost every week. I say the blogosphere. All right. So don't forget, folks, you can check out uh, programming through the new on-demand button. We'll be adding more and more stuff there. Uh, TDL Live is not on there yet. You can check out our iPod game reviews. Will it be on there soon? Uh, soon. Good. Good. Probably tomorrow. So our viewers want syndication and on demand. They do, they do. And also, I just want to take a moment to shamelessly plug, if I could. Please do. Below the player on our main site on the digitallifestyle.tv, you're going to see a button that says, uh, what's it say, Macro? It says, make a donation, I believe. Donate. Yeah. Donate. Uh, we've been happy to bring you TDL Live commercial free, but much like PBS, don't make us go to a phone bank, folks. <laughs> You do not want us answering the phones <laughs> on air. So, and we don't even have, you know, prize packs for you, and we don't have any shows about wine. So, we just, <laughs> we're asking you, please, if you enjoy the show, enjoy the network. It's great to let us know. Make a donation, or just send us an email. That, that's, you know what? Yeah, send an email. We, we run on, on uh, kudos points, too. Kudo dollars. Yeah. So. Let us know. Feedback at the digitallifestyle.tv. If there's something you like about the programming, something you uh, think we should add, um, let us know about it. We'd love to hear. And don't forget, if you've been checking out netformac.com, we have a, a group in there. Hope you'll join us on yeah. the TDL uh, viewers group. The digitallifestyle.tv is the actual name of the viewers group. And where else can they find us? Our Facebook page is coming. Our Facebook page, yeah. It's coming soon. Coming soon. Oh, good. Soon-ish. <laughs> 
See, I think if we wait long enough, there'll just be another big site, and then we can say we're coming soon to that one. <laughs> Well, there's always something in the social networking realm you can be coming soon to. Mm -hmm. So, I think we should be somewhere. Very good. Don't forget, next week we'll be back. It's TDL Live again. Tomorrow's a Tuesday. That could mean new product. We're way overdue for new IMAX mm -hmm. at this point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, watch out for the classic. We'll be back soon. Post it on the store. Of course, if that does happen, we'll have all the information for you tomorrow. So, join us next week at 9 o'clock. We'll do this again. And then, of course, Ellen Feiss in her film bed and breakfast sounds good you got anything else for the folks I, I have a great week i wish we could start ending the show with some sort of quote from you i'd like you to a quote like a, an inspirational quote or hmm. something i'll look into that you want to take you want to take a week i'm going to <laughs> i think i think i am fair <laughs> enough all right folks we will uh see you next week thanks ah. for joining us oh think, wait think different uh, think different well. goodbye you, everybody get on the spot See you next week.